four days ago, Denoli um, did his latest video on revealing Payday 2's insane cut ending. Where he went over 11 minutes video on how the ending could have been in Payday 2 instead of the White House, which I presume it would be. But thankfully, we didn't have that. And the reason I said this, in my honest opinion, there's a lot of things that could go wrong with it, but with the uh, cut ending. The first one is it doesn't fit with Payday 2's tone. And it doesn't belong in it as well. Like, first of all, how in the hell do we went from robbing banks t to supposedly fighting Nephilim crap yeah you got me I have literally no fucking clue ask Overkill or ask the writers if they still oh if they're still in the studio that is and the reason why this doesn't work or at least generally uh, general that the storyline doesn't work with Payday 2 is because it's an arcade shooter it's not a campaign where they would have a much more fully fleshed out story. And it doesn't help the fact they introduce a storyline four years later after the game's life cycle back in Crime Fest 2017, of course, better known as the Lock and Load event. Where they try to put heist in chronological order, which I don't think a lot of people give a rat's ass about it. And also. I feel like the reason they add a storyline is not because they were out of ideas, but more so just try and find a way to end Payday 2 on a high note. Or at least try to. But that didn't really work out too well, and it really got a lot of people questioning on the lore about Payday 2. Like, like we're just robbing f fucking banks, we're pulling off these heists, and somehow we're using a box to try to get our mentor, you know, swap his body with something else. Like, how the hell did we went from that in the first place? Like, seriously, a storyline doesn't work in Pay 2. It doesn't fit. And also, I think at this point, people really don't care about the story at all in these types of games. Like, if I want to get hooked up to a story, I would rather read a book or watch a film. Or in the case of a video game, I would just play the single player campaign. At least that way, I could get enjoyment out of the gameplay. If the enjoyment is may not be to my liking, perhaps the story will. And sometimes, both elements really mix well, pretty well together. In the case of Payday 2, gameplay will always come out on top over storyline any day. Even if a storyline would be, you know, is the best thing they add, gameplay is always priority first. But, of course, if you do like the story, I'm completely fine with that. I'm just saying it from experience because, especially for, you know, for new beginners or, you know, for... You know, little children, they probably won't get hooked up to the story and they think gameplay is a lot more fun. As for, you know, for new players, they don't really go for the story. They go for the gameplay because they want to see how the controls are and how the movement is and the gimmicks and mechanics to the game. So, Storyline doesn't really do much if the gameplay is suck so much crap. If the gameplay is horrible, then people will just not play the game. And that would make the storyline completely useless and pointless at the same time. That's almost kind of what happened with the the Easter eggs in, uh, in COD Zombies. Where only about 2% of the people only done every Easter egg... I'm presuming if that's, you know, just Treyarch COD Zombies or just COD Zombies in general from other games. But only about 2% of the players have completed it, so they waste all that 
resources or story if no one like no one wants to spoil get spoiled by YouTube videos then the storyline don't really mean much don't mean shit to the casual players as they just rather go for the gameplay or maybe the fact that the Easter eggs is either you know a lot more challenging to do but hey they at least they made it more easier on Cold War which I don't mind they had to tone it down but I really wish they would add a little more steps to it but anyway back on topic It's just, it's just over the place with the supernatural being. Plus, I find the writing they have for it, where we have, of course, our protagonists being, you know, robbers, being the payday gang. You know, just regular human beings use modern day firearms, and they steal shit. They collect stuff. They even well, steal shit and have them in their safe house. Such as the samurai armor from Shadow Raid. And then they come across well, a contractor named, of course, the, the dentist. Where they uh, um, told them to pull off all these type of difficult heists to do, like some sort of trial, before they go for their biggest challenge yet, being the Gold Green Casino. So first they need to do the big bank, the diamond... And also doing his um, helping with Hoxton's sweet, sweet revenge on the rat that screwed him over with Hoxton Breakout and Hoxton's Revenge. And then they went to the Golden Grin Casino. Well, before they actually free Hoxton out, they had to do in Hollow Miami and get Commissar out. But and that's pretty much the bit of the story he had with the dentist. And the loot we're getting is a box. A box where it has Illuminati, which could, of course, mean a lot of things. And then we never hear about the dentists again. And that's usually we have the middle arc where we see what the artifact really does. I'm not going to go over the whole, you know, Bane missing thing. Just the other stuff itself. And then we find out what the artifact does with the free boxes, the alien tablet, and the medallion. And, of course, the the, the dentist, of course, kind of, I guess, betrayed the pay gang and also tried to use the uh, these boxes to try to swap bodies with someone more younger, more healthier. That way, he can able to live through centuries. And probably the reason why he can able to live through centuries is because of it. Almost basically practically making him immortal. And then we're finally at the final act where we have the final confrontation with, well, the Pei King and the dentist back in the low underground beneath the White House. Only to, uh, have the dentist pretty much being defeated by the Payday Gang, who are just regular robbers robbing fucking banks for breakfast, and he's been killed off, even though he's been living for so long, been defeated by modern-day shooters. And that writing kind of reminds me of other two games to have a similar writing to it. The two of them being Tomb Raider and Uncharted. I'll go over uh, each set um, game's entries with a similar story to it. The first one being Tomb Raider. I'll go with the original one in 1996. And the story is, of course, Laura being a tomb raider, robbing tombs. Uh, Ashley being uh, met with Natla, contract through a little small laptop. And Natla pretty much asked Laura to go through search the tomb of Qualipec in Peru. And also show the artifact being what it's supposed to be the ski on. Not only not only Laura secured a ski on in Peru, she also went to Greeks, Greek and Egypt to get the other two pieces of ski on, and she found a little more of a thing about the artifacts, and sees that the ski ons are pretty much a key to rebuild the Atlantean army, which, of course, in the mid arc, which is where we are now, 
would have been uh, Nala pretty much betray Laura, try to kill her off with her uh, gunman, which I forgot to mention too, that the Pei gang also fight people using guns, being of course being cops and gangsters and thugs. And Laura does the same thing as well, shooting you know, Natalus' bodyguard during Natalus' mines. And now let's try to use the power to rebuild her Lantean army, almost pretty much also make her immortal as well. And of course, Laura and Nala has their final confrontation, where Laura defeats her with her, well, with her dual well pistols. And funny enough, Laura doesn't have any powers, and Nala does, and yet Nala is being defeated, even though she's supernatural, plus saving the world. And then we have Uncharted, which I'm going to go with the uh, story of Uncharted 2. Where Nathan Drake, of course, looking for the, his next adventure of uh, looking for the Tintamonte Stone, which is, I don't look for all these clues, but mainly the originally located in Shambhala. And of course, I have to face an antagonist, which also wants the artifact, or at least the. Uh, the power it has as well to make him immortal. So during the middle arc, we see that the Chintamonte stone is not really much of a stone at all. It's just a tree of sap, which helps um, allow the user, whoever drinks it, to heal fully from all you know very deadly runes such as like burns or scars, and able to dish out so much damage. Just like the guardians that the uh, try to defend their righteous place, and then of course we had Nathan Drake and Lasarovich had their final confrontation, where Nathan Drake, just an ordinary human using, well, using modern day firearms, able to feed a supernatural antagonist like Lasarovich, and plus saving the world. You see the pattern here. It's just that your antagonist, or not protagonist, being whether it be a robber, a looter, a tomb raider, or a thief, that you just rob shit to either do it for money or display thing in your, you know, in your home. Just a normal human being that just robs shit. So it doesn't matter if your character is, does a good thing, like a good deed or a bad deed. Only for them to be the savior against a antagonist with supernatural abilities and yet still being lost to it. Like, I'm not saying this is like lazy copy and paste writing for the writer who's, you know, writes stuff and pay to. I just find it to be very similar to each other from the games I kind of mentioned. Except for the fact that. Tomb Raider and Uncharted story are a lot better than Payday 2's, which Payday 2 should never have it in the begin with. Also, the fact that a lot of the majority of people or are actually are interested in the Payday 2 story, I don't think a lot of people are going to talk about it though. Because the majority of players just don't give a rat's ass about it. All they go for is the gameplay. So that's why you see like on so many posts like on Reddit or comments on YouTube or something like that. I don't see a lot of people talk about the story. It's just gameplay. Whether it be memes with special units, the weapons. Or you know main issues with the game like how horrible the updates we had back in June for both Payday 2 and Crime War being such a disaster, that's actually a lot more better of a story than the actual story in Payday 2 ever had. And... And I just really... Oh, fingers crossed and hope to God that we don't have... Anything like this in 
payday free. Which, how the way I think, what would be my way of, you know, try to add maybe, if they do try to add like a Nephilim or something like this, or try to make it, you know, part of it still, I would just try to write something like, during the uh, events between, you know, Payday 2 and Payday 3, where, you know, the Payday gang, you know, the original Payday gang, you know, hops onto a plane and gets ready to fly out to New York to, to you know, settle their new spot. And while they wait there, they, you know, have a little sleep. They have, they're sleeping, you know, sleep to pass some time. And, of course, they're dreaming about, you know, fighting the Nephilim and all that stuff. And only to be wake up, it was all just a dream. All that shit didn't happen. It was just a dream. And soon they arrive to New York, and the whole Nephilim shit has been forgotten completely. That would be my best way to at least end off the whole Nephilim stuff. Because it just doesn't work. And honestly, I don't think people will give a damn about the returning of that stuff in Payday Free. People just want to rob shit, want to rob banks, pulling off these heists. Just like we do in Payday Heist and the early days of Payday 2. Because that's what keeps people going. And that's how you make fucking money. Not fucking story in an arcade shooter. That just doesn't work. If you try to do it, you know, years later and not months in or never plan to. But anyways, that's everything I got to say for now, guys. All I can really say is, thank you for watching, everyone. If you watched the whole way through. And until next time, farewell and have a wonderful day, everyone.